This Chosid was not a big Tzaddik. He was not a big Talmud Chacham. He was a very, very simple, simple Yid. And when he came to the Rebbe Marash for Yechidus, it's not like he came because he had a special request for children or a special request for for Shlema. It was because he was paying a once a year visit to the Rebbe. Every Chosid always tries to make an effort to visit the Rebbe at least one time during the year. So this Chosid comes into the Rebbe Marash's room for his Yechidus. And the Rebbe Marash turns to him and says, tell me, my dear Chosid, do you learn Torah? So the Chosid says, well, Rebbe, you know, you know, Isaac, I really can't learn that much because I'm a very simple fellow. I didn't go to a yeshiva or to a cheder when I was younger. I just know how to read. For me to learn is very difficult. So the Rebbe said to him, but you're a yid, I'm sure you learned something. What is it that you learned? So the Chassid says, Rebbe, I learned a sefer, which many of you probably never heard. Your grandmothers all used it. It's called Tsena Ure'ena. Tsena Ure'ena is a sefer that's written not in Hebrew, not Lashna Kaidish. It's written in Yiddish. Right? So you don't have to understand Hebrew to be able to read it. If you spoke Yiddish, like everybody in those days spoke, right? Then you knew how to read Tsena Ure'ena. And Tsena Ure'ena has in it just stories from Chumash and from Navi. All the stories that you find in Chumash, all the stories that you find in Chumash, all the stories you can find in Navi are printed in Yiddish in a story format in Tsena So that's what I learned, Rebbe. I can only read Tsena That's all I can do. So the Rebbe said, very good, very good. That's a good thing. Make sure every week you should read the Tzenna Urena, because it's broken up according to the Parshiyas, right? So the stories of Rashi's, Rashi. So every week make sure to read some Tzenna Urena. So this Chosid says, sure, of course. The Rebbe gave him instructions. So that's what he did. He went back to his hometown, and every week he would sit and read Tzenna Urena every single week. Week in, week out, years passed. Many, many years passed. In the meantime, in the meantime, this Yid had a child, he had many children, but they had a baby at some point in time. At some point in time he had a baby. And one fine morning this Yid is in Shul Davening, and when he is in Shul Davening, people come running to him, and they say, uh, the Yid, you must run back home. There was a big accident in the house. What happened? The baby was laying in the crib, and somebody by accident took a pillow or something, and they put it over the baby's head by accident, and Rahman al it seems that the baby passed away. You must come quickly. Of course, he ran quickly, took off his towels and filled, he ran home, and there's a commotion of people out there, and they're crying, and they're screaming, and they don't know what to do. He says, everybody, please, he didn't lose himself. He says, everybody, please move away from the door of the room. I want to go into the room myself. And he goes into the room. And he closes the door. A few minutes later, he walks out with the baby. The baby's crying. The baby is doing a miracle. He's amazing. So they asked him, well, what happened? He said, very simple. Remember, it was a very simple year. It wasn't someone that learned a lot, didn't understand things very deeply. He says, I listened to my Rebbe. The Rebbe told me years ago that I should read every week Tzedor Rebbe, right? Those stories in Yiddish that are there from the Torah and from Navi. I read there a few times over the years a story about Elisha. Elisha was a Navi. And there was a story with Elisha that there was a boy that seemed that he unfortunately passed away. And Elisha told everybody to leave the room. And he went ahead 
and he laid down and he breathed life into this child. So I went ahead. I did the same thing. No big deal. Okay? There was a big chassid. The big chassid's name was Repetitz Mochkin. Repetitz Mochkin was a big chassid who was a great grandfather of many of you boys here in this room now. Or a great uncle, right? It's like, we have many boys in this room who are great grandchildren of Repetitz or great nephews of his. That Pettit's Machka used to say this story. And he said that Hasidim, in the times of the Rebbe Marash, said, what do you think? You think it was this fellow that made Chiesa Mason? Of course it was the Koyach of the Rebbe Marash. But this Chassid, with his emuna, with his belief in the Eberster, and in the words that the Rebbe told him, was able to be a good keli, a good vessel, that the bracha should happen through him. Because he listened to the Rebbe's words, and he believed in those words with a sincerity. He was able to accomplish things in a manner of l'chadchila river, higher than nature, above everything. What lesson can we learn from this story? From this story, Kimbalach, we can learn something very important. I want to share with you one lesson, and then I'll hear from you a few more. The Rebbe, our Rebbe, told us, every one of the Chassidim, that we all have a mission. We all have to bring life to this world. When we find ourselves in Golos, it's our job to bring life to the world because the darkness of the world seems to be I mean, the opposite of life, right? We have to bring life to our home. We have to bring life into our Cheder Tzibay Hashem, into our rooms. We have to bring life to our surroundings. When we are a little bit older and we have a chance to go out with Tzayim and reach out to other people who are not yet doing Taira and Mitzvahs, we bring life to them, right? When someone is even older and they go and they open up a Chabad house in a community, they bring life to an entire community, to a city, to a state, to a country. Really, how can you, how can I, simple, kindalach seemingly, or even adults, how can we bring life to a place that seems so dark? The Rebbe gives us credits. The Rebbe says, if you go ahead and just do what you're supposed to do, you learn Taira, you increase your Abbas Yisrael to your friend, you increase Abbas Yisrael to your neighbors, to your community, to your cities, every person in accordance to what they could do, you will be able to do that type of Tchiyas Amesim also. You conduct yourself in a way of L'Chathil river that you don't think about my limitations, you will be successful. That is a very important lesson from the Rebbe Maharash, his approach to Chavchil River and the story. Kindalach. We have with us a guest, as I told you before. You heard my story because we needed to wait a few extra minutes, so you have a special extra bonus. I'm going to ask you to give your hands and your attention, literally for three minutes or so, to our guest, so that he can share with us also, because whenever we have a guest that brings extra simcha, like a ponim chadashais, let's give him our hands and our attention for three minutes before we let you know which kita or kitois will be participating in the Rebbe Marash's birthday party with a extra treat today by lunchtime. Please give Rabbi Gurkov, the Rebbe Shliach in London, Ontario, your and your attention. Good job, everyone. I didn't hear you. Good job, everyone. Uh, now I heard you, but did the Rebbe Marash hear you? No. Let's try to say it so that he can hear us. Good job, everyone. Now I know he heard us. I want to tell you a story. 
I heard this beautiful story just a moment ago. Here is another beautiful story. And I love this story because it could have happened to me. This story is about a chassid of the Rebbe Maharaj. His name was Reb Abba. Reb Abba was a very, very rich man. Very, very rich. So rich that he didn't have a moment to himself. Every single second someone came to him with a question about his business. First it was someone saying, Reb Abba, someone wants to buy a building from you. Do you want to sell it? Before he even had a chance to answer that, somebody else came along and said, Reb Abba, someone wants to sell a building to you. Do you want to buy it? And before he turned around, someone else came and said, Reb Abba, I just brought a whole shipment in of wood. Do you have money to pay for it? Reb Abba didn't have a moment to himself. Every moment, every day. Reb Abba wanted to sit down and learn something. He never had time. He wanted to daven like a chassid. He never had time. So he comes to the Rebbe Marash and he says, Rebbe, Rebbe, what should I do? I'm so busy. I don't have time to learn Taira. I don't have time to daven like a chassid should daven. I'm happy if I even have time to find 20 minutes to run into shul to daven with a minion to hear Baruch Ho and Kriyas Taira. What should I do, Rebbe? And you know what the Rebbe said to him? He said, Abba, is this the way you thank the Abishter for giving you a chance to be so rich? He gives you so much money, and this is how you thank the Abishter? So you know what Rebbe said? Rebbe said, Rebbe, you know what I, I think I want to do? I think I want to throw away the whole business. And I'm going to go give all the money away to tzedakah. And I'm going to sit in the shul all day and learn Torah. And do you think the Rebbe agreed with Rebbe? No. It sounds like a good idea. Because he's going to be able to throw away all the things that keep him from learning Torah and davening like a mensch. And he'll be able to sit all day long. He can afford it. And he'll give so much tzedakah. But no, that's not what the Rebbe said to him to do. The Rebbe said, Baba, you want to give tzedakah? Give tzedakah. But don't throw away your business. You know why? Because that's not the right thing to do. When you find yourself having problems because you can't find time for the Abishter, the solution is not saying, forget it, I'm not going to be able to find time. I have to do a whole new thing in my life. The solution is to figure out how to find time together with what we're doing in life. You know why this story could have happened to me? Because this morning when it was time for me to wake up and my alarm clock rang in the morning, the first thing I said is, I can't wake up, it's too early in the morning, I'm tired. Did anybody else have that happen to them this morning? Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm not alone. But you know what? Then another voice inside my head got up and said, you have to wake up now because it's going to be Minion, and if you don't wake up, you're going to be late for Minion. So I got out of bed. But then, the next morning, the next moment, after I got dressed, and I came out, and it was time to say Drafas, I said to myself, you know what? But I want to just play on my iPad for just a few minutes before I say Drafas. Did that, did that happen to you? Yes! Oh my goodness, it happened to me too! And then, 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 I, I didn't give myself a chance to play on my iPad because I was going to be late. But you know what happened next? I saw a really, really delicious bagel and I said, hmm, maybe before I go daven I should have a bagel so I'll have the kayak to daven. And I really, really wanted to wash and have the bagel before I said brachas. It really did? Now, do you think it was my Yetzir type telling me to have the bagel so I could have kayak to daven? Was it my Yetzir talking to me? Was it that same guy that wanted me to be on the iPad? And it was also my Yetzirah who wanted me to be sleeping in bed a few extra minutes? And be late for Minion? So maybe, maybe the answer is, maybe the answer is, throw away all the bagels in my house. Throw away all the iPads in my house. Throw away all the beds in my house. And this way, the Yates of Hara won't have anything else he can throw at me to tell me to do. I'll have no choice. I'll be able to dive in and learn. That'll be the only choice I have. Ah, uh, not 
not such a good idea, huh? What the Nebbe Maharaj teaches us in this story, Kindalak, is to remember that even though we have all these different things our Yetzirah tells us to do, each of us has the Koyach at every moment to stand up and say to our Yetzirah, No! I'm not listening. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to shul, I'm going to go to cheder, I'm going to listen to my mommy, I'm going to listen to my tati, I'm going to do the mitzvah, I'm going to put on my tzitzis, I'm going to say the bracha, and I'm going to have kibbutz ha'ein. Because every single moment our Yetzirah is going to come to us with another idea, but if we keep telling him who's boss, if we keep showing him, I don't need to listen to you, you need to listen to me, then sooner or later, he's going to learn who's boss. Now, who likes to be the boss? Raise your hand. And who likes to get bossed around by someone who isn't even your boss? Raise your hand. So, those of you who like to get bossed around, maybe you can give it to your Yetzirah. But those of us who like to be the boss, we stand up and tell our Yetzirah, ah, 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 you listen to me. And when the Yetzirah says, when the Yetzirah says, but tell me why. Why should I listen to you? At that moment, you only answer one word. You know what it is? It's actually four words. It's four words. And the moment everyone's quiet, I'm going to share them with you. The four words are because I said so. Because I said so. Why do I have to go in now if, not, if I'm not finished with my game yet and mommy said it's time for supper? Because I said so. You have to listen to me because I'm your boss. That is L'Chadchil Adiver. Good job to everyone. Yeah.